Warning! The following Let's Play may contain mature content and topics of a macabre nature. Discretion is advised. Good evening! This is a yesterday's moose production! Ah! 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 This game is Wendy! Every which way! Ah! 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 Do not fret. Do not scream. This is just something for Halloween. Ah, ah, ah. Okay, enough of that. Yes, we're playing Wendy. Every which way. That's the name for Game Boy Color. I never played this game when it originally came out. I, in fact, never had a Game Boy Color. But we're going to play it now on my Super Console X. Let's just go ahead and get things started. Graphics in this game are really good. And uh, this game was made by WayForward, the same company that did Shantae. I think I pretty much have all the Shantae games at this point. Including the Game Boy Color version, I downloaded that on my Nintendo Switch. Had to turn down the volume of the game for myself a little bit because it's uh, hard to concentrate. So here we go, level 1 1. I'm going to try to do this let's play in at least two uh, parts and possibly three. And I'm really going to try to get them both out before actual Halloween. Now, this game has a very interesting mechanic where you can flip upside down like that. There's another game that uh, had this same uh, mechanic, the name of which I can't remember. It has a robot, and you can flip upside down. I'll put the name of it on the screen right now. Okay, that's what it's called. Also, if you're a fan of RPG Maker for the PlayStation, there was a game on RPG Maker by the name of Nanobot, which used a very similar technique. And it was uh, very interesting and very unique for an RPG Maker game. Now, uh, this game itself is pretty easy. I went through it once before. Uh, before Let's Playing It, and uh, I think I died maybe once, and it's because I was doing something silly, and uh, yeah. I'm going to try to get all of these stars in the game, even though that's not the objective at all. In fact, the stars just represent how much life you have, so they're not even really uh, collectible per se. But uh, when I first played this, I thought that they were collectible that I had to get, so I was collecting all of them. And I just decided if I'm going to let's play it, I may as well do that again. I may not get all of them, but I'm going to try. You also do not have to defeat all the enemies, because they only give you points. And what do points count towards? I don't know. I don't even know if you get a free life for any of that. Speaking of collecting everything... Oh, there was another star up there. May as well get it. Okay, I'm gonna go down here and see if there's anything here. No, but of course there's a star up there, so... Let's go and get that for no reason. This is why it might end up being three parts, because I think it took me more than 30 minutes to get through the whole game. And I don't want to make my Let's Play too long. 
Another thing is that you can't uh, drop down from platforms. You can only jump through them. So here, if I press down to jump, I can't jump through it, but I can, however, jump over it. Not there, by the way, but you can, trust me, you can jump over it. Right here, like this, you can jump like that. These guys, you can defeat them, but it's kind of just easier to avoid them. And there we go. Just like that, we're already done. There's a password if you want it. So there are four areas with four, whatever, sub-levels each, so a total of 16 levels. And three of them are like this, platforming, and the fourth one is a side-scrolling shmup. So that's kind of fun. The shoot 'em up sections are even easier than this part. Oh, there. I defeated them. Hooray. Now, these guys are a little bit hard to avoid. Depending on the situation, I just avoided that guy quite easily. If you can call an animated block a guy. I've also prepared some information for my increasingly popular section of my Let's Plays that I occasionally do called Let's Play and Learn, where I find some facts about the game or about life in general, and everybody's happy about it. And not only do they like the videos, but they comment on them often and share them with their friends. That's totally a thing that happens, and not just something I made up. So some of these facts are just about Halloween-y type stuff, horror stuff, witches. For example, in the beginning of this video, I was kind of doing a Bella Lugosi thing or maybe more like a guy from Monster Mash type deal. We're talking in a voice like this or like these. Ah, ah, ah. Now, the count from Sesame Street does go ah, ah, ah. But uh, from what I can tell in my searching, Bella Lugosi himself never did go, ah, ah, ah. He also never said, blah, 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 or I want to suck your blood. Those things are believed to have come from people imitating him, where I want to suck your blood became I want to suck your blood and blood eventually became blah and then blah became blah 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 and somehow it stuck It's weird how things like that happen Let me concentrate here for a second. I have to get down there, but that guy is in my way. And I keep messing up. There we go. On to the shmup section. 
Bonus level! Ah, ah, ah? On the bonus levels, you can also flip upside down, which really doesn't have a point. Whoops. Whoops. I also can't move when I get hit, so... Uh, yeah, that's my first loss. I shouldn't have lost. The only reason I did is because I actually didn't know that you couldn't move after you get hit. So I was a bit surprised that that was happening. So that's not gonna happen again. <laughs> he says as he gets hit by the very first enemy. You can't move forward or backward either, which is weird. Or, yeah, yes you can, why? I swear I was pressing forward and backward before, why wasn't she moving? Anyways... I am now going to very easily pass this level. So I'm going to go until level 4-4, I guess, and I'll see what, uh, how long I've been recording at that time. And unless it goes a lot longer, in which case I'll, I'll stop it sooner. But that's, that's my goal right now, which is why it'll be two videos and uh, not just one continuous video. But I said three, you know, just in case it goes really long for some reason. Well, this guy is a bit tricky. You have to get him to drop that bomb and then you flip upside down and uh, the bomb falls on him. So the next fact is about Frankenstein. A lot of people know this, but Frankenstein, of course, is not the name of the creature. It is the name of the doctor who creates the creature. Dr. Frankenstein is his name. And the creature really doesn't have a name. I once uh, made a one-panel comic about this fact where Frankenstein's monster was walking down the street and someone said, ah, it's Frankenstein. And uh, Frankenstein's monster has a t-shirt on that says, I am Frankenstein's monster, not Frankenstein himself. And the caption said, no one ever reads the shirt. That was my attempt at a far side joke, and if you don't know what the far side is, it was a comic strip that was fairly popular, and it usually was just a one panel joke. Look it up. Some of them are pretty funny. Some of them are pretty silly, but I think that was the idea. Apparently in the novel of Frankenstein, he did not have an assistant named Igor. In the uh, movie version, his assistant is a hunchback and his name is Fritz. Oh, this is a little bit tricky. So I have to concentrate here for a second before I continue on. So 
So in the movie Son of Frankenstein, there was a character named Igor, spelled Y-G-O-R, not I-G-O-R. And he also was not a hunchback. He had a broken neck because he was uh, hung, because he was accused of stealing. So he was messed up, and that's why he appeared as though he might have a hunchback, but he did not have a hunchback. So pretty much the point is that uh, the idea of Frankenstein having a hunchback sidekick whose name was also Igor is a fiction that was made up after the fact. Now, did I miss anything back here? If there is anything back there, oh well. I really don't think I did miss anything. Here we get into the somewhat macabre facts uh, about witches. During the Salem Witch Trials, there were no witches, quote unquote, that were burned. In fact, there were 19 people that were hung and one that was pressed to death. And reportedly it took him a long time to die, and when he was asked if he would plead, he said, More weight! That's right, they were crushing him to death, and his words were, More weight! Yeah. You think you're tough? Well, then there's this guy. In the wonderful Wizard of Oz. Someone's calling me. Hold on. And we're back. In the wonderful Wizard of Oz, there were four witches, one for each cardinal direction. That's uh, pretty common, I think. There was the Wicked Witch of the East, and the Wicked Witch of the West, and the Good Witch of the South, and the Good Witch of the North. Those of you who read the book probably know all about that, but if you've watched the movie, maybe you're only familiar with two of the witches. Me, I had a vague knowledge that there were more. I have seen The Return to Oz, which is a very unique, maybe possibly sequel, but Definitely not made by uh, MGM. Oh, bonus fact, which I don't have written down, but I do uh, remember myself uh, from film studies. I had to stop there for a second because there was uh, something making noise outside. Anyways, uh, The Wizard of Oz was shot in Technicolor. A lot of people know that, but a lot, maybe people do not know exactly what Technicolor is. Uh, Technicolor is basically a film process where the same film is filmed with three different movie stocks, all of them with uh, different colors, red, blue, and green. And when they are combined together, they create a color picture. 
And the camera that was used for this process was huge and very heavy, very difficult to move around, and also it's expensive because you're doing three sets of film. So if you're setting up for a shot, you better get it right. that this game does uh, kind of require quite a bit of concentration as you're getting into it. Mainly because I was just playing it quietly on my own and wasn't trying to make commentary over it. After all, why would I do that when I'm sitting by myself? That'd be crazy! Here we are, bonus level number two. Am I already at the half point here? I will check after this stage. Once again, how, why did I f fall down there? Once again, I was trying to move my character left and right. And she's not cooperating. But now she is. What's the deal with that? Is it the emulation that's doing it? Who's to say? But it's certainly making me look very boastful and not at all good at this game. <laughs> that's normal for me. Well, there we go. I'm at the end of the stage. Hooray for me. How long have I been recording now? Okay, that's how long. And what level am I at? Is it time to stop? Nope! <laughs> 3-1. Okay. to decide what I'm going to do. I did say I might break this up into three. Maybe I will stop it after this level. Which means that this video will definitely be out before Halloween. The second one possibly so, the third one maybe not, unless I move really quickly. And by move really quickly I mean editing, etc, etc. Okay, I'm gonna get these. Haha! -ha. Yes, you can change directions while you're in the air. Certainly makes things a lot easier. Before I go over there, I shall go here. By the way, if it isn't obvious, your shots power up the more health you have. So right now I got a spread shot, and uh, the projectiles are bigger than they normally would be. So I'll just throw in this last fact before uh, we get to any other stages here. I'm sure many of you have seen Monty Python and the Holy Grail. It's only the most popular, I think, of all the Monty Python films. Well, maybe not. Certainly the one that a lot of people quote, that's for sure.
Oh no! Stop walking into stuff! Okay, during the witch trial they do discuss uh, water, things floating in water, uh, such as wood, or a duck. And uh, this comes from uh, old tests to see if you're a witch, a, a swimming test, sort of. Which to me seems utterly ridiculous, but what do I know? This was done, and I quote uh, from the internet here. Hold on, let me get this star. Die, you! Okay, I wasn't quoting there, now I'm quoting. Here we go. Since witches were believed to have spurned the sacrament of baptism, it was thought that the water would reject their body and prevent them from submerging. According to this logic, an innocent person would sink like a stone, but a witch would simply bob on the surface. Really fascinating stuff there, don't you think? Not really, it's kind of horrible. Not kind of horrible, it definitely is horrible. According to the almighty internet, humans are nearly neutrally buoyant, so some people might float and some might sink. That really has nothing to do with whether or not you're a witch. And here's the section I remember this. I'm gonna backtrack here a little bit. Is there something that I'm forgetting? Can I even go back now? Another thing about this uh, supposed swimming test is that pretty often these people were weighed down to force them to sink. So I'm not exactly sure how that was going to prove anything. I guess maybe you would magically float to the surface. What's going on here? Am I like messing myself up now? Am I going for stars for no particular reason? I don't know where I'm going, and I don't know if I'm going to get all of the stars now. That was all of the facts for now. I'm not sure if I will have any more facts for my second video. Perhaps I needed more witch facts. That would have made sense. But I was kind of going with the spooky holly or pff, Halloween theme. I was about to say Hollywood, which is entirely different. Yeah, I'm gonna stop this at uh, level 3-4, or the beginning of 4-1 rather. And I guess this will be divided into three segments, which is weird. And I will also walk directly into spikes. Whoops. I know what I'm doing wrong. That's what I'm doing wrong. Must remember that you can flip whilst jumping.
So apparently this game costs quite a bit if you buy it second hand. I think I remember trying to uh, look it up and see how much it was and uh, perhaps at the time I don't think I was able to find a good price. It's weird how some games get uh, ridiculously high in value whereas other ones seem to have absolutely none whatsoever. And uh, sure, this is a great quality game, but how much is it really worth? I mean, if you could play it on emulation like this, does that mean that it's really worth a lot? I don't know. A physical copy in the box with instructions? Unopened? Okay, maybe we're talking about something now, but... He just had the game, let's say, without anything, with no box, no instructions, would that be worth a lot? Who's to say? And if you're buying it just for the sake of collecting, are you gonna play it? Personally, I like to play the games that I buy. I don't really buy anything for the purposes of collecting. I've only done that with two things. I bought a Game & Watch, the Super Mario Brothers Game & Watch. And uh, I do plan to maybe get the Legend of Zelda Game & Watch. Because those are very unique. So I left that in the box and I also bought not one but two copies of Super Mario 3D All-Stars for the Switch. And that was my test. My test to see, are these actually going to be worth anything? Will I ever get more money back than what I spent on them? My guess is, no. I probably won't. Maybe if I waited a hundred years? Yeah, maybe then. But I probably wouldn't be around to enjoy it. There's that. So right now when I look up both of those things, Super Mario Game & Watch and Super Mario 3D All-Stars, they haven't really gone up in value. They have gone down. And even if they're in the box and then opened, they seem to be worth less than what I paid for them. So maybe... Maybe if I put it on eBay and uh, did an auction, which I'm not a big fan of, kind of don't like the, uh, the idea of an auction because you're not guaranteed a sale. I guess I could uh, always have a buy it now option kind of thing. It just seems like a lot of work. Uh, to work. For what? Am I gonna make five bucks? Ten bucks? And is five or ten dollars really worth waiting countless years for it to go up in value by that much? I don't know. But I digress. Here we are in the bonus level. Final bonus level for this video. Will I learn how to move forward and backwards? We shall see. Okay, she is moving forwards and backwards now. So what was the problem before? The problem is that when you get hit, you can't move. I keep forgetting that. So there's several frames where you just can't move at all. So I guess the safest place to be is back here. And I'm just now realizing I only have one life left. At this point, 
The first time I was playing this, I had quite a bit more. So maybe points do count for something? I don't know. I haven't been paying attention. Can you get a free life? Okay, well, that's it for this video. I'll just leave it at uh, the password screen. And in the next video, we'll pick up in level 4-1. So thank you very much for watching. This has been a Yesterday's Moose production. And I'll see you next time.